Hello everyone, it's Giselle from Kids Yoga Stories and for today's yoga story time, we're going to read Elizabeth and the Magnolia Fairy, a yoga story about being confident. And at the end of the reading, I'll talk to you more about the yoga principle or the yoga lesson, what this story is based on. Let's dive in. Elizabeth loved exploring new places with her parents. Today they were visiting an enchanted garden in the countryside. Elizabeth was excited to find an adventure park among the trees. It had wooden bridges, windy slides, and giant swings. High above, a rope's walkway stretched from trunk to trunk. Now the story I wrote a couple years ago after visiting a beautiful enchanted forest in the south of England. With a big grin, Elizabeth ran over to the ropes course. As she climbed the ladder though, her palms began to sweat. Her heart felt like it was beating too hard and her legs suddenly froze. The children got behind her got annoyed and eventually she felt she had no choice but to go back down. She waited her turn and tried again, but the same Thing happened and I'm curious if any of you have felt like that if you felt your palms begin to sweat or your heart beating if you've had those thoughts where you were a little bit nervous or anxious about doing something I wonder if you can relate to Elizabeth frustrated Elizabeth sat down on the bench and began to sob why are you crying Elizabeth asked a gentle voice who are you Elizabeth asked in surprise looking up I'm the Magnolia fairy I live here in the fairy garden, the voice replied. Elizabeth had seen the sign saying it was a fairy garden, but she hadn't realized that real fairies lived here. I want to go home, Elizabeth replied, still in disbelief that she was talking to a fairy who somehow knew her name. Why do you want to do that? The fairy asked. I want to try the treetops walkway, but I'm too scared and the kids got mad at me for taking too long on the ladder. Elizabeth sighed. Sometimes the kids at school are like that too. Oh, I see, the Magnolia Fairy said. What are you afraid of exactly? That I might fall off, Elizabeth replied. Come with me, the Magnolia Fairy said as she fluttered away. Elizabeth followed the fairy. She could see her parents and the other children in the playground, but now everything looked different. Welcome to Fairyland, said the Magnolia Fairy. Wow, this is amazing. In awe, Elizabeth looked down at her clothes, which had transformed into the most beautiful dress she'd ever Scene. The Magnolia Fairy led Elizabeth to the ladder. No one was waiting to enter the treetops walkway. Off you go. But I can't, Elizabeth felt her tummy flop. You mean you can't do it yet? The Magnolia Fairy smiled. In Fairyland, we believe in concentrating on one thing at a time. What does that mean? Elizabeth asked. Instead of all those scary thoughts that you can't do it, that you need your parents or that the kids won't like you, concentrating on taking one step at a time. The Magnolia Fairy pointed to Elizabeth's dress. You're a warrior princess after all, walking across a wooden bridge to get to your castle. And that's how you get across the treetop walkway all by yourself. Have you heard the yoga lesson yet? You make it sound so easy, Elizabeth said. It is easy, the fairy winked. Take one step at a time, you could do it. Be a warrior princess. Okay, I'll try. Hesitantly, Elizabeth began to climb. 
Magic vines and flowers grew up the ladder as she climbed higher. I'm doing it. That's right, Elizabeth. Take it step by step. And it's like magic, the Magnolia Fairy said. Elizabeth got to the top of the ladder and took a deep breath. Suddenly, she saw a commotion on the other side of the bridge where three tree gnomes were jumping up and down. She followed their gazes and saw a sleeping golden owl. Then she saw what was the matter. The branch holding the owl was about to crack in half and the gnomes were trying to wake him up, but they were too short to reach him. You see the owls here, the owl and the gnomes. Determined to help the gnome, she whispered to herself, I can do this. I must save the owl. Just, just concentrate on one thing at a time. The warrior princess slowly and steadily walked across the walkway. Her legs started shaking. She again took a deep breath and focused on the path in front of her, taking one step at a time. Yes, that's it. Keep going, Elizabeth. You've got this, the Magnolia Fairy said, fluttering next to her. You're almost there. The fear had gone. Elizabeth felt like she was walking on clouds. She could feel her princess crown perched on her head. Every step became easier as she got closer to saving the golden owl. As she took her last step, she looked up and reached for the branch where the owl was perched. I've got you, little owl, she said. Suddenly, the owl opened his eyes and Elizabeth was sure she saw a smile on his face. She turned around to introduce herself to the tree gnomes, but they weren't there. She looked for the magnolia fairy, but she wasn't there either. And neither was the golden owl. Everything had gone back to normal. No more magical creatures, no more Magnolia Fairy. At first she felt disappointed, but then she remembered her amazing journey in Fairyland. She knew that the Magnolia Fairy must be a busy fairy if she was helping other kids too. Maybe Elizabeth would see, see her again another time. As Elizabeth walked over to the picnic table, her parents were packing up the lunch. Can we come back here another time, she asked. Of course, my dear, said Elizabeth's mom as she gave her a tight hug and kissed her on the head. We saw you go across that walkway. You're very brave. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. I was a warrior princess going to the tree no village to save the owl from the broken branch. Elizabeth drifted off into her thoughts. She was so proud of herself too. If she could do that, she knew she could do anything. So did you find the yoga lesson in this book? You'll be able to see it on the first page here. The yoga principle states that suffering can be eliminated if the mind is repeatedly brought to a single focus. So that means oftentimes we have all these thoughts in our mind, lots of things going on, and if we really just focus on one thing at a time. That will help eliminate a lot of our stresses and worries and concerns. Now you try that. When you're brushing your teeth, just brush your teeth. When you're having dinner, put away everything else and just have dinner. When you're doing your homework, just focus on your homework. Let me know in the comments below if that's helpful. Thanks so much for joining us. See you next time.